internet, this is Vords. And Cyrus. And we're here once again in the kitchen because once again it is recipe time. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do it. <laughs> so what we're making today is barbecue meatloaf. What's barbecue meatloaf? Well, I'm glad you asked. Barbecue meatloaf is essentially meatloaf but cooked in a barbecue. Now here's the thing. It's been raining a lot recently in Southern California, which is a little bit weird because usually we get about three days of rain every year. The point is, sometimes it's hot outside and it's hot inside, and you want to do some baking or cook something in the oven like meatloaf, but don't want to heat up your whole kitchen. So sometimes you can use your barbecue to do things that you would have used an oven for. Here's what you're going to need. So here's the deal. One of the things you can do to help engage your child and help him or her understand some of the new common core math requirements is you can have them help with cooking. As it turns out, following a recipe, figuring out all the ingredients in the order, this helps the child's brain learn to think in a logical way. Ordered lists, cause and effect, and, and helps develop those important critical thinking skills that are absent from so many modern day voters. So one of the first things I did is I had him take this and I asked him to put it into an order sorted in essentially categories. So what are the three categories I asked you to put them in? Dry, wet, and miscellaneous. We're going to start with the dry ingredients in our medium sized mixing bowl. One third cup of oatmeal, one third cup of punko, one third cup of red crumbs. Alright, so what's next on our list of dry ingredients? We need one teaspoon of salt and pepper, mm -hmm. and we need one fourth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. And that would mean something if we weren't out of garlic powder. So here's what we're going to do. You might have seen in a previous recipe where I had a thing called Dave's Special, which is a mixture of three different types of peppercorns, salt, and garlic powder. Drying some of this into a small container, which you probably can't see on camera, or maybe you can. I don't know. Who knows? That's about one teaspoon. Cool. And this, which is about one fourth teaspoon. One quarter teaspoon. We don't need any more, so it goes over there. And so this is nice mixed up. Are we done with our dry ingredients? Yes. So what are we going to now? Wet. Okie doke. And we need leg. Leg? Leg? I don't think leg is wet. Oh, one egg. Uh, All right, okay, one egg. Scramble up this egg. Two spoons. Spoons? Worcestershire. Worcestershire. You put Worcestershire. Yeah, when your dad does a lot of screwy things. Worcestershire. Doesn't sound correct, but it is. Two teaspoons of it. Two teaspoons. Then a teaspoon of mustard. Please make it brown mustard. I mean, you can make it whatever you want. But if you make this without brown mustard, please don't serve any of it to me. One half teaspoon mustard. Now, decision time. Do you prefer your meatloaf to be super moist and crumbly and sort of falling apart? Or do you want your loaf to be in more of a solid loafish type of shape so that it doesn't crumble and fall apart? And you can bring a slice or two of it with you for lunch tomorrow. To make a meatloaf sandwich. Mm -hmm. If you want it more moist, that's when you put in a quarter cup of milk. We're not going to do it moist. We want it more of a loaf. So we're getting rid of that. Mix up our moist ingredients here, and we're on to the miscellaneous, which is where we're going to use our biggest bowl because we're going to add these two other bowls to this one. So what we need in our miscellaneous is first one pound of ground beef. Indeed. Check her out. What's that? It's ground beef. Uh... In you go, minced up dead cow. So what's up next for the miscellaneous ingredients? One fourth cup onions, one fourth cup bell peppers. Okay, now these, these are going to need to be diced. Oh, no, man, I already used that joke. We can't use it again. Sorry. 
So I have onions and bell peppers all nice and diced up. Now here's the thing. It's best if you soak up a lot of the moisture out of the onions and bell pepper. So what you do is you strain it through a cheesecloth. Do we even have a cheesecloth? No, what do I look like, a cook? What I use is some paper towels. Get all that into paper towels and you just squeeze it a bunch. So what we're gonna do is we're kinda mash up our ground beef here. The onions and the bell peppers go into the mashed up meat. We want to make sure that all of the different flavors in the moist ingredients get mixed together. Same thing with these dry ingredients. Which so, won't be dry anymore. Okay. At the end, what you want is essentially like this kind of moundish ball thing right here. Can you see that? There, there. Can you see that? There's that. Okay. It's important to note that if we were doing this in the oven, we would have been preheating the oven all this time. However, barbecue preheats pretty gosh darn quickly. You're spreading that out into a loaf. That's why it's called meatloaf. Indeed. Ba -ba -da -bum, and it looks like that. So start up your barbecue and wait for the temperature to read 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Insert the pan at the centermost of the grill. Close the lid. You want to turn your left burner to very low, your middle burner off, and your right burner also to very low. Set your timer to 30 minutes and activate. Now that your meatloaf's in the barbecue and cooking, you've got some time to kill. So you can do, uh, you know, you can do a few things. You can uh, play a game. play a little bit of indoor handball since outside's still kind of wet due to the rain. Or you could also use this time to start making the topping. You'll need one cup diced tomatoes, two tablespoons honey, one tablespoon ketchup, two tablespoons maple syrup. Stir well. Return to your barbecue and pour the topping over the mostly cooked meatloaf. Spread it evenly over the top. Cook for another 15 minutes. When time is up, Make sure the meatloaf is from 155 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit and it's ready to eat. Slice, serve, and enjoy. So that's all we got this time. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a great rest of your day and look forward to seeing you again. Be up, Mr. Yogin. to put um pongo is essentially japanese pred pred um uh, blah, 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 blah. are we still recording so i have my eyes in here blah 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 blah, blah. we still recording moisture from your eyes in here blah, 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 blah. um so now your people blah, 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 blah. we're recording okay um 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 what was i doing oh